Prince of Persia 3D is bad. I'm thinking you are the fake, you run away. At the end of Shadow and the Flame, we saw Gruntilda shake her gnarled fist at the prince and princess of Persia, supposedly furious at the hot, my quest is over sex that they would surely get up to that night. Princess! This was a story thread Prince of Persia creator Jordan Mechner meant to follow up on, but sadly never did as he stepped away from the thick carpets and transparent pants of Persia and took a ride on The Last Express instead. Publishers own IPs though, so Red Orb Entertainment, a subsidiary of Broderbund, went on to create another pop game and sort of barely managed to do it this time without Mechner at the helm. Now, think back to the mid-90s. Does anyone remember anything important happening to action games then? A anything at all? Yeah. So without much surprise, Prince of Persia simply became a Tomb Raider knockoff, complete with ugly rendered FMVs, slow grid-based controls, and adopting more puzzle-based labyrinth level designs. The first thing you're greeted to when you're starting up Pop 3D is the aforementioned cutscenes brimming with poorly delivered voiceovers and fairly garish character designs. While it's never really been confirmed if this is the same kingdom or world as the previous two games in the series, we can assume not. The prince now looks like he just walked off the bloody battlefields of Mace the Dark Age, and gives off this wafting smell of being a dick as he complains about being bored and then ogles a nearby belly dancer even though he's currently going steady with the princess who's right there. But what's this? The heels rush in, overpower the prince, and hold the sultan and the princess hostage. Apparently the sultan's brother is, is salty that the princess was not marrying his son or whatever. It's, it's not an interesting story, so I, I think it's better for all of us if, if we just move on. Regardless, Al-Rashid is thrown into the dungeons of the palace by purple skinned guards and left to his own devices, and within seconds busts out of his cell where his confusing and slow paced adventure begins. The first thing you'll notice about Prince of Persia 3D is that it takes about a half minute to turn the prince's lumbering ass around to simply walk due to the fact that it adopts that grid based movement method of the older Tomb Raiders, but with the prince being even less responsive and agile than Miss Croft. This isn't that big of a deal, considering the style of game is now much slower paced affair that emphasizes puzzles, block pushing, and a few new tools rather than precise platforming, running, or quick reflexes. You now have to navigate really confusing levels that have little rhyme or reason to the design or layout as they have this almost random look and feel. The modeling and textures seem to start and end on a whim, with doors and staircases seemingly leading to nowhere, with lots of indecipherable objects strewn about. Simply put, these, these early stages lack any sort of consistent art direction and are unfun to navigate as they're simply so ugly and oftentimes just a mess of disconnected rooms. After a few minutes, you'll realize that the majority of your time is spent rubbing your ass against every surface to find the right switch, button, or block needed to progress. One of the new tools at the prince's disposal is a new bow that comes with a variety of different arrowheads including fire and magic and even mind possessing gases that allow the prince to control the actions of patrolling enemies. This sounds like a neat addition, 
but the targeting and firing of the bow is just so slow and clunky feeling, you get no real satisfaction from using it. This also carries over to the basic combat of POP 3D, which consists of wandering close to an enemy, triggering the encounter in which the camera then cuts to an awkward angle and then you proceed to just button bash against your opponent. The fights are tedious and feel so strict and lifeless compared against the large open 3D nature of the game and lack that quick tension of sword battles from Mechner's games. It seems the development team weren't fans of the fighting as well, as they also added items to help you skip combat altogether, which come in the form of invisibility potions. Use these and you can slip past guards unnoticed, and not even have to slog through the combat. Thanks! So, uh, is there any redeeming factors in this? No. Well, there are a few positives, but sadly nothing that makes this bumbling adventure really worth taking. First off, Prince of Persia 3D has a fantastic score that employs exotic instruments, chanting choirs, has a very international flavor that pretty much set the standard for how many of the later Ubisoft productions should sound. In fact, I would say the soundtrack is the best part of the game because circa 1999, it's fairly ahead of its time and still holds up as an ambient and well-made OST. The atmosphere of the game, despite its initial grittier and more realistic tone, while well, later levels then just branch out to be much more fantasy based. You're traveling around a bluish astral plains that seem to be very mystical in nature. So that's pretty cool. Lastly, despite everything being kind of clunky and unpolished, I commend the developers for at least trying something different by adding usable items and weapons, more puzzles and such, it's just that as a whole it doesn't come together. Much of this having to do with the sluggish controls and bad camera. I mean in the late to mid 90s, games like Banjo Kazooie, Mario, Tomb Raider, Metal Gear Solid were blowing up in 3D. And it was a bit sad that Prince of Persia didn't even get close to hanging with those. Now, despite all the previous games in the pop franchise getting ported up the ass, 3D was released on the PC and then on the Dreamcast, and that's it. Gamers in Japan and especially Europe who had consoles were shit out of luck as the Dreamcast version was a North American exclusive, but honestly, they weren't missing much. This version was unfathomably put through a name change and was just dubbed Prince of Persia Arabian Nights, which is fine, but it's also known as Arabian Nights Prince of Persia. What? I mean, what's the point to fool idiots into thinking it's a new game? This is your big hustle? But what is surprising is that the Dreamcast version is slightly better, sort of. The controls are more responsive, a new lighting system was implemented, and an inventory system was added which the prince can then use to stock additional potions. More bugs were also fixed, and two of the most frustrating levels from the PC version were just straight out cut out. Good job! All of this, however, is kind of null and void when you realize the PC's feature to save anywhere was also cut and replaced with an unforgiving checkpoint system that puts you way farther back than you'd expect. So does all this balance out? Are these two versions basically in parody with each other? Who knows, the, the game wasn't successful, it got bad reviews, and it tarnished the franchise's legacy for years. A reason why this bums me out so much that if it wasn't for Pop 3D, you could lobby Prince of Persia was one of the most consistent major franchises in terms of quality when you look at their mainline games. But instead, it's an embarrassing stain on an otherwise excellent record. Now, before we move on to greener pastures, there's one more curio that was released after Pop 3D but before the sands of time. I'll let the title screen do the talking. Yes, in 2002, Gameloft released something called Prince of Persia Harem Adventures. Yeah. Now, I haven't played this game, obviously, as I didn't even own a cell phone back then. Even if I did, 
why would I play this? Essentially, it's just a watered down version of Prince of Persia 1, but you play it with your flip top phone's keypad, I think? It's seven short levels, and instead of saving a princess at the end of a dungeon, you're just trying to get the Sultan's harem back from the vizier that kidnapped them for... I, I don't... I don't want to know why. So rescue the seven ladies, and then you're treated to naughty, pixelated renderings of each one, right? No, I... It, you can't even do that. Now, I can't imagine how this thing would control, so I won't even bother assuming. Still, though... It's a wacky official entry into the franchise that I bet Jordan Mechner probably isn't even aware of. Uh, but that's all in the past now, isn't it? And despite this episode being a bit of a downer, you shouldn't dwell on it because time is not a straight line. It has many branching paths and streams because, of course, time is an ocean in a storm.